Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. This is such an important passage that we're looking at. It's very succinct. There's not a lot of drama, and yet there is, in the words that are said. So let's look at it. We're in John chapter 21, the last chapter of the book of John, and we're looking at verses 20 to 22, and it reads like this. Then Peter turning around. Well, what was going on? And why is it then Peter turned around? Well, let's give you a little bit of the background as to what was going on before. Peter and John and all of the other five disciples standing with Jesus who had prepared some fish and some bread on open coals. There, after they had eaten, Jesus says to Peter three times, Do you love me? Peter makes a confession. Finally, at the very end, Peter says, Lord, you know all things. And so he knows he is forgiven by our Lord because he also goes on to say, Peter, and now this is verse 19. He describes the manner in which Peter will die and will glorify God through his death. And when he finished saying that to Peter, his last words in verse 19 is, follow me. That is an ongoing obedience. Follow me. That can be taken two ways now. One is that is the course of the believer's life. Follow Christ. Peter will even say that in his epistle, that we should follow in his steps. And now it can also be taken. It was a physical. Yet Peter is now following Jesus, and they're beginning to move away from the other disciples. So that's when we find in verse 20, then Peter turning around. The word in the Greek is a sudden turning around. And he saw, the word saw is the word blepo in the Greek. It means that he glanced. It's the same word used of John when Peter and John ran to the tomb. And there, John enters first, but doesn't actually enter into the tomb. He looks into the tomb, and the word is he glanced. Blepo, same word. So he saw, and he saw the disciple, and we now find a description of John. And that first description is the one whom Jesus loved. The second is whom also leaned on the breast of Jesus at the Last Supper, and finally, the one who said, Lord, who is it that betrays you? So those three descriptions, let's look at them first. The one whom Jesus loved. John does not describe himself as John, always describes himself as the one that Jesus loved. Interestingly, the first time we find that reference is in the Last Supper in John chapter 13 and verse 23. And then we find it again at the cross that was the one whom Jesus loved that was next to Mary, his mother, and the one whom G John was uh, given responsibility to care for Mary. And then we find the one who loved Jesus is described as coming with Peter to the tomb. And then we find him by the Sea of Tiberias, where we're at now. So it's always describing John. And then we find the one who leaned on Jesus' breast. What does that mean? Well, it's actually a reference to the intimacy that John and Jesus had with each other. It seems strange to us because we don't do that in the Western culture, not here in the United States, although it wouldn't be uncommon to find in Middle Eastern or Eastern countries. We find it, however, a description of the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. For in John chapter 1, verse 18, we have beheld the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, who is in the breast, the bosom of the Father. And so now we have a description that John was so close to Jesus that at the Last Supper, as each are not sitting on chairs, but they're laying on each other, John was the one that laid on Jesus' chest. But he goes on to say, 
that John is the one who also said, Lord, who is it that betrays you? Well, I'm going to hold on to that one just for a moment and look at what's going on with Peter. Peter turns around and he sees. What does he see? He sees John. John's following. And he's taken his eyes off Jesus. You see, Jesus had called Peter to follow me. Well, that's been a problem with Peter throughout his life and actually a problem for us. He was distracted earlier on in the Gospel of Luke when we find that they had been toiling all night and they had not caught any fish. And our Lord speaks to them and immediately Peter realizes that it is the Lord. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, we will look at, I toiled all night, I've caught nothing, why is it I work so hard and it's all about me? Later on in another passage in Matthew chapter uh, 14, uh, and also in the Gospel of John chapter 6, we have our Lord that is walking on water. Peter gets out of the boat, walks on the water, doing quite well as long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus. But then he takes his eyes off of our Lord and he begins to sink. He's looking at the winds and the waves. When we are distracted looking at ourselves, we're distracted looking at our circumstances, rather than at the Lord, we are going down. And so this time, Peter turns around and he sees John. And seeing John, he then asks, But Lord, what about him? Well, now I want to go back to the question that John raised. John is saying, I'm no different than Peter. Because John is the one that at the Last Supper, he's laying on Jesus' chest and they're having a time of communion, celebrating the Passover Seder. And John asks, Lord, who is it that betrays? Who is his eyes on? Is it on the Lord? No, it's on the other disciples. He's wanting to know about the other guy. And so John is saying, Peter's asking a question, but I am no better than Peter. So what was Peter's question? Peter says, what about this man? Now, Peter is not envious. He is not jealous of John. Instead, he has just been told by our Lord he is going to die. And what manner of death that is, and it's associated with the glory of God. Peter and John are incredibly close to each other. They're part of the inner circle. They have been together at the uh, at Mount Tabor when the Mount of Transfiguration. It was Peter, James, and John. They were the ones that were in the inner circle when Jesus took them in Gethsemane and had them pray. It was Peter, James, and John. It's Peter and John that go to the tomb together. And after Pentecost, it's Peter and John that are going to be on the temple steps and healing a, a man that is blind. And he is the one who will say, we must obey God rather than men. Peter and John are incredibly close. What Peter wants to know is, Lord, what about him? Will he die the way that I die? Will he be glorified as I will be glorified by glorifying the Lord, that is, is that what's going to happen? You see, when people really love each other, they want to die together. They want to be able to celebrate everything together. And I believe that's what's going on with Peter. Peter is wanting to know what's going to happen to John, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Jesus then draws his attention, and he says, what is that to you? If he remains until I come, you, and the word in the Greek is emphatic. The attention is, you follow me. Now, we're living in times when this passage actually is quite important and very relevant. You see, in the United States, we're having an election. And the election is the focus on men. And certainly, we can be very occupied with that, concerned in either way. 
And the rest of the world, by the way, has their eyes also on the United States. And at the same time, in every country, in every culture, there are men that we look at and we wonder, what is the future? What our Lord is drawing our remembrance to is that we must look unto him who is the author and finisher of our faith, and we must remember what Nebuchadnezzar said a long time ago, the Lord is the one who raises up, the Lord is the one who puts down, he's the one that attributes the powers that exist, and we must keep our eyes on him. If you're a true believer, I encourage you, in this time, you remember that all authority comes from the Lord, and you keep your eyes focused on Him. Be praying. It is not a problem to be looking at what's going on in the world, but always remember you're looking at the Lord who is controlling the things that happen in this world. What's your responsibility to follow Him? Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. We praise you that you're the one who is in control. You're the sovereign Lord. You are the one who is King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you that Jesus is coming again. And we trust that all things that we currently see are working to the good according to your purpose and your sovereign plan. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.